Hey everybody, this is Mitch Schwartz, your Las Vegas real estate professional since 1987. You know, today I was talking about uh, short sales versus foreclosures with a client, and it dawned on me, I should probably explain to all of you the short sale benefits versus the foreclosure detriments. Now, today I'm going to go over three things that are the differences between a short sale and a foreclosure, and hopefully outline for you the benefits of the short sale versus the detriments of a foreclosure. Let's get started. And before I actually do roll on this one, I want to make sure you know that I'm not an accountant or a CPA or am I an attorney. I think it's very important that all of my clients and prospects speak to one of those professionals or both before they actually make a decision on whether or not a short sale or a bankruptcy or a foreclosure or a deed in lieu is actually in their best interest. So please take the time to do that. And if you need a referral for one of those professionals, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you out with that as well. I've also created a list of frequently asked questions by people just like you about what um, a short sale can and can't do for them. Click on the link that says short sale help right on this website. It'll take you to a place that's going to get you where you need to go, answer your questions, home, hopefully give you some good information to make an educated decision. So let's move forward. I'm going to make this quick and hopefully easy to understand. So I'm going to break it down into a few basic points. Short sale benefits versus foreclosure detriments. First off, let's talk about deficiency judgments. Everybody says deficiency, deficiency, deficiency. Most loans that are foreclosed upon in the state of Nevada, if it's a first mortgage, that first mortgage has up to six months to file a lawsuit for a deficiency. Now, in this economy, don't be surprised that a lot of lenders are considering this because they're giving up a huge amount of money when they do a foreclosure. They want that money back. On a second mortgage, they have up to six years to get that money back six years to file a deficiency judgment. I don't know about you, I would think that they're probably just gonna lay and wait, and the second they think you as the owner are back on your feet, they're gonna come after you. It's not worth the risk. With a short sale, the benefits are pretty simple. We get the information, we explain to the bank, we negotiate with them, and actually get them to agree to waive their rights for future, future deficiency. That means that they're telling us in writing that they're not going to come after you anytime in the future with regards to the deficient amount. That would be both for first and second mortgages. What a benefit. You can sell the property, get out at a lower price, and not be stuck for a deficiency down the road. To me, that's a practically a double bonus. The other thing you want to know about is credit score issues. Foreclosure will more seriously impact the life of a seller. Here's what we've been told by many loan organizations and servicers that are out there. When a person has had a foreclosure, they not only will have it follow them for the next five to seven years at least, they will forever be required to mark the box on any credit application that specifically asks about whether or not they've had a foreclosure. It doesn't say or ask the question, have you had a foreclosure in the last two years? Have you had a foreclosure in the last three years? It just asks, have you ever had a foreclosure? Well, I don't know about you. I wouldn't have any interest in marking that box. And if you don't, they can find out about it. So why take that chance? With a short sale, there's no requirement for that. So it's not going to affect your ability to get credit in the way that a foreclosure will because they're not even asking whether or not you had a short sale. Secondly, the points that um, hit on your credit score should be a lot less with a short sale than it will on a foreclosure because basically it's going to say you settled the debt yeah, it's going to say you settled the debt for less than what you owed, but it's not going to say that they took the property back in foreclosure, which will help you. So basically, by doing the short sale versus the foreclosure, your credits probably should be better or not as uh, beat up as it would be on a foreclosure. You're going to, if you take care of your business other than the, uh, for the short sale property, like your car payments and your credit card payments and any other credit obligations you have, you can very likely be putting yourself in a position in the next 18 to 24 months to buy another property while the prices are still at today's low standards. Incredible. Finally, you're going to gain control. What I mean by that is with a foreclosure, you don't have any control over when that happens. Bank files a notice. They have 122 days from the day they file the notice of default to actually come and take your property. I don't know about you, I wouldn't like to be sitting uh, at dinner with my family and get the knock on the door from somebody who's coming out to tell you that they just took your property. I'd much rather be in a position like you can be with a short sale. Short sale, you actually have a buyer in hand. 
you have a reasonable idea or an expectation when you're going to get an approval from the bank if you're working with a, a professional who knows what they're doing. And you know that once you get an approval from the bank, approximately how long after that time it's going to need you to move out. Do you want to get a 30-day notice or would you rather get a couple of months notice and be prepared? It's going to be a lot better. You're going to have more control and you're going to know what's going on pretty much every step of the way. So let's talk about this finally. With a, with a foreclosure, you have basically no control. You're going to um, get stuck with probably a deficiency judgment and your credit score um, is probably going to be impacted a lot more. With a short sale, that's less likely. More than likely, if you're an owner-occupant, we can get you out without a deficiency judgment. Your credit score is going to impact a lot less and you're going to gain a lot more control of the situation. So before considering the whole, I'm just going to stick it to the bank and walk away scenario, I suggest that you actually get some information, educate yourself from people who actually know what they're talking about, CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents like myself, go on the internet. Don't just take it from people who walked away who think that that's the solution. Make an educated decision and talk to somebody. Good example of that is a client of mine who needed to sell her property on a short sale. We actually not only found a buyer, kept my client from thinking that she wanted to walk away because she seriously was concerned and was worried and kept on wanting to give up. I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up. I kept on hearing from her. We talked her into staying in the game and it actually worked to her advantage. She is now telling me that she's going to be in a position sometime in the next 18 to 24 months to buy. And how does she know? She is already getting people soliciting her for additional credit, whereas I'm certain that if it was a foreclosure on her record, she probably wouldn't be getting that. That's a great thing for her. She's moved on, her life is happy, and she has no stress. She gained the control, she, her credit is impacted less, and she doesn't have a deficiency judgment on her record. What a great thing for her. So, get educated, make a good decision that's best for you, and do the right thing. I hope I've delivered some good information for you. If I have, please let me know. If I haven't, I'd like to know what you need to know. Tell me you know, things that I can help you with. Make it an awesome day, and I look forward to talking to you soon.